Hello Physical Fiends, it's Jordan here with today's Worth the Purchase, a video series where I play a game for a short amount of time to see if I would buy it myself. Today we've got the unsatisfactorily named El Renteros Wanderings. Personally, I thought the Japanese name of Ria Sekai was pretty cool already, but what do I know? Now, this is out digitally on the Switch already, but in October, there's going to be a physical release. Purchase links are below in the description if you want to buy and support me at the same time. But it's a pretty complicated release, so I'll explain in more detail soon. First, what is this game? Now this was developed by the same developer as some of the later Rune Factory games and you can instantly see that in the art style alone, especially the character sprites, it looks lovely. But this is more on the action side of things, it's a seemingly simple dungeon crawling hack and slash with relationship building, kind of. So the story has the potential to be interesting because you're a guy or girl who's between two worlds, the modern day and the fantasy land that you start in. And you don't really know which one you belong in, at least the player doesn't at the start, you feel like an isekai in both. I mean, it's a plot trope that's been done to death, but it can work. Unfortunately, literally no love or attention went into the story of this game. It's a hard cut intro without any penmanship. I don't know if it's bad writing or the developers not being asked to spend time making interesting cutscenes. Instead, they seem to be happy to have visual novel storytelling, which, you know, as you know, I enjoy visual novels, but goddamn, get these type of cutscenes out of my RPGs. Put some effort in. They're very soulless in the time that I played so far, and there are just too many characters introduced too early. Perhaps there's a nice twist coming with the world switching coming up, but I really struggle to get invested in the characters. They're all strangers to you, but they're all nice to you. They all need you to help them. It just, I don't know, it just didn't catch me at all. The gameplay, a bit better. So you have this little hub town, which is filled to the brim with villagers, all with their own bespoke artwork. Very nice, if very overwhelming. You're invited to greet all of them when you first get there, but when you see like 25 of them, you know, being introduced to that many people at once, it's a fool's errand. So I didn't quite learn all their names in the couple of hours that I played. I skipped past most of them. I guess I appreciate the amount of NPCs, I just wish they could have been, you know, funneled into the game better. When you talk with them, you can have a chat, or you can assist them with their side quest problem. Or if there are more serious relationship things going on, you can give them a gift if you have one. I think this is an overly efficient game, at least so far, because the game literally tells you which gift you need to unlock, which stat buff or passive ability that the relationship will give you. There's no guessing, there's no seduction, it's just... Okay, I need this specific item if I want 15% increase in damage with swords. There's no romance here, and that's in the multi-layered meaning. And then the side quests, like you don't even need to accept them, and you get most of the solutions by beating a section of the dungeon. You'll get like 5 items for completing the dungeon, and there'll be 5 items the various villagers are looking for. This is the video game equivalent of two incredibly prude people who need to quickly get the jiggy jiggy done because they have to reproduce at some point. There's no love, it's done as efficiently and unlovingly as possible. Thankfully, the actual combat is alright. Once you're in the dungeon, I like the game a lot more. Don't get me wrong, this is the kind of combat you'll find in a mobile game, but at least it's simple and you can relax, you know, while you switch off your brain. It's a hack and slash dungeon crawler with multiple short-ish dungeons where you have one attack button. You have other abilities and items that are mapped to other buttons and act as cooldown timers, so you can use as many potions as you like as long as you wait for them to recharge. There are lots of weapon types and you'll be looting loads of them, but you can't equip them until after you've completed the dungeon you're in. Same with armor. Enemies are varied and look fun. They're fun to fight too, as is finding all the loot. It's incredibly basic, but I don't mind it too much. I can already get the feeling that it's going to be repetitive though, since those village requests you'll almost certainly not get them all in one level of the dungeon, so you'll have to play through the same section of a dungeon for a second or maybe even a third time if you balls up one of the trickier things, like not getting hit by a certain type of enemy. And then there's grinding for items or better weapons. It may not be everyone's cup of tea. And really, I don't think this will be many people's cup of tea. But if you do want it physically, let's talk about it. 
Now, the physical edition is where things get a little complicated. I mean, this thing is more complicated than the damn game itself. So, there is a North American release and there is a European release. They each have three editions. Sadly, for explanation's sake, they're not entirely identical. So, let's start with North America. North America has a standard edition that comes with a sticker sheet and a keychain as a nice little bonus. There is a special edition, which is the same price, but that is limited to just 500 units and includes an acrylic standee alongside the sticker sheet and keychain. There's literally no reason not to get this one unless it's sold out because it's the same price. It's also exclusive to Video Games Plus. Links are below. And finally, there's the collector's edition, which includes a steel case, a sticker sheet, keychain, enamel pin, and a double-sided poster. Interesting that this is more expensive, but does not come with the acrylic standee. That's an odd choice, but anyways, this is limited to 1,000 copies. VGP are carrying all of these, and you can get free shipping worldwide on all of them. There's no minimum purchase here. Links are down below in the description. Now, the European version, there is a standard edition, which will also be available at retail. The standard edition is different to the North American one because it contains an exclusive cover sleeve alongside the keychain and stickers. RedArtGames.com on their website, they have some more exclusive editions that you won't find at retail. The Deluxe Edition has a different cover sleeve as well as a 30-page art book. It also contains the sticker sheet and keychain and the acrylic standee. So it's the equivalent of the North American Special Edition, but it has two more things with it. Again, it's the same price as the Standard Edition. There's no reason to pick up the Standard EU Edition unless you really like that exclusive sleeve. And finally, the European Collector's Edition, I believe, is exactly the same as the North American Collector's Edition. So that means the Collector's Edition in Europe is also missing the acrylic standee and the art book. Why? I have no idea. I don't think they thought this through very well. But if you want the European version, check the links below in the description. If you purchase from redartgames.com, you can't get free shipping, but you can get 10% off if you use my discount code SWATCH10. Overall, I am not convinced by El Renteros Wanderings. It's got essences of things that I like from games that I enjoy, but uh, it wasn't put together with care. It feels very slapdash. I really like the art style. I like the character art. I like some of the gameplay mechanics, but it's just too shallow for the price they're asking for. It doesn't feel like it was made with wonder or imagination. It's very dry. It's very efficient. That is the word. It's just too efficient. I do not think I would buy this myself. How about you? If you do want to buy it physically, please check the links down below, and I do greatly appreciate your support. Have a fantastic day, guys. Take care.